Hello, I'm Washayla, and today, what can you learn from a cockroach? <laughs> I had an experience this morning where I was sound asleep, um, and normally I wake up and meditate for an hour in the morning before I get out of bed. I just sit up in bed and meditate there. Well, this morning that didn't happen because I had I have two cats and they went trampling over me um, early before 6 a.m. and they um, were in pursuit of something. And I mean, they were jumping on the headboard, they were knocking things over. So um, there was no going back to sleep for me. I turned the light on and looked and there on the board next to the ceiling was a really big cockroach and they were chasing it. And so this was probably, I live in Florida, cockroaches are here, it's just part of, you know, what we deal with. Um, and they're usually not in the house. This is a, this is a unique situation, but it was the biggest cockroach that I've probably ever seen anywhere. It was between, it was probably four inches. I mean, it's really, really big, maybe three and a half. I don't know, but it's definitely a big one. And I lived in Hawaii. I've lived some places where they have big cockroaches. But this is a really big one. So I could actually see its head looking from my cats to me and kind of, it was almost like, what should I do now, you know? And the cats were so wound up chasing it all over, you know, at this point, they're all over the bedroom on everything, knocking things over. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, this needs to stop. So I put the cats out on the lanai. The, in the meantime, the cockroach went missing. I don't know where it was. Um, and then I went to, I'm like, well, I'll just do a meditation walk. Um, outside because it's a beautiful morning. So I went to wash my face in the bathroom. And as I was going to wash my face, I had my face like going into the sink. That roach came and jumped right in front of my face and almost landed on my face, probably about an inch from my face and it landed in the sink. And I'm like, what, why? okay. <laughs> it's like, it's following me. So, um, I went and I like immediately without even really thinking, I just grabbed the little trash can and scooped that roach out, uh, up and I went and tossed it outside on the lanai and that's where the cats were. Well, of course the cats started chasing it again and I had gone into the house, but then I started feeling guilty thinking, Oh wow. You know, I just threw the roach to the lions. And even though I don't appreciate having a roach in my house, you know, I, I sent him to his death and not only just death, but like terrifying death by cats, which I'm sure even to a huge roach, the cats are gigantic. So, you know, I, I just sentenced him to torture and death by the lions, you know, threw him to the lions, I guess. So I, rethought that. I went, I got the little trash can again, scooped the roach up on the lanai and tossed it out of the lanai into safely into a shrub outside where at least the cats can't get it. And, um, and I came back in and then I just uh, went on a, a meditation walk and decided to contemplate, you know, what was that all about? Because here's this big insect that came from the outside, um, came into the house decided to, you know, come into my bedroom, um, almost kind of in a plea for help, it seemed like, because, you know, it's being pursued by these very tenacious and excited cats. And, um, and then, you know, it had its chance to get away, but instead it came and jumped in front of my face, almost landing on my face or my head. And, um, it seemed like it was trying to tell me something, right? And I'm a big believer in pay attention to the clues and the synchronicities. And when, you know, when something like that happens, there's always a message um, has been my understanding or experience. So what was the message here? And while I was thinking about it and thinking about, um, you know, I've actually taken up not killing insects. Um, I don't, when I see an insect now, I used to do it, but um, I don't anymore. I scoop them up and take them outside usually. And I usually don't throw, throw them to the cats, but um, I, because it's life, 
because you can communicate with life and that life is part of me and I'm part of it. So I want to honor all life and that includes the cockroaches and that includes the earwig that was on my wall the other day. Um, I will sit down that I can go into communication with them and tell them, you know what, it's not right for you to be in the house. You know, this is my sacred space. Um, I honor you, but please don't live in my house. There were red ants in this house when I moved in. I did not poison them. I didn't do any special measures to get rid of them other than not have um, anything to attract them, like food laying out. But um, they left. They left of their own accord. And I haven't seen them since. And, you know, I, I really believe we can have that communication. So I, I tapped in and asked, what was the communication with this roach? And it was really about, number one, about compassion, compassion for all life, honoring all life. You know, what life am I looking at as less than me? Well, certainly I had the idea of a cockroach being less than. Um, I think it's cultural. I think a lot of us do that. I don't really, I don't hold cockroaches secret. Um, but in my practice, I, I um, intend to hold all life as sacred, whether I like the form that it's in or not is not, that's not what matters. What matters is it's life and life is sacred. So I must also then honor the cockroach as sacred. Um, so I got that lesson and then what's, what goes, you know, just as deep or deeper is where in my life am I throwing myself to the lions or throwing the people around me or in my community to the lions. And that's the throwing the cockroach in front of the cats, you know, where can I scoop that up and, and create safety and hold space. And so for instance, my son is going into middle school. He's, um, his parents are divorcing. He's, you know, he's got a lot of, you know, it's hard enough to be going to middle school, but there's COVID and they're going to have to wear masks and who knows if they'll even be able to stay in school or if he should even be in school. So, you know, he's got a lot of stuff to deal with this year and, how can I support him more? How can I support his father more in our separation process? How can I support the rest of my family? And how can I, going out from there, support my clients more and my community more and myself more? Ultimately, where am I throwing anybody to the lions, you know, because of something that I don't want to take responsibility for? So, um, and, you know, that that deep contemplation, I really got to, it all comes back to supporting myself, holding a higher space for, you know, for me to get the support I need so that I'm overflowing with generosity. So I'm coming from the heart of service. And you can't come from the heart of service if you're in lack consciousness. And so the way that shows up for me right now in my life is hiring more support. I'm building my business. I need a salesperson on my team. I need an assistant coach on my team. And these are things I've been holding out on due to an element of lack consciousness. And it's funny because I've dealt with so much of that already, but it's like these little sprouts that show up. I'm like, why am I waiting? What am I waiting for? You know, where am I stopping myself from getting the support I need so that I can support everybody else in a better way? And that's really what it comes down to. Another place is to get help with my home and cooking. I'm not um, someone who likes to go grocery shopping and make food and do dishes and all of the stuff that goes around that. It's just something I don't enjoy. However, I like to have healthy food and I certainly like to feed my son in a healthy way. So I'm looking at getting support in maybe having someone come in and bring healthy meals or come in and cook healthy meals so that I can do what I love and use that time to support him and use that time to support my clients and my my community and to be in my vision and be of service in a greater way without having to do things that take me out of that. And so these are just some of the ways that I'm finding that I'm going to 
support myself more so I don't feel thrown to the lions. And I want to encourage you in listening to this, you know, where can you take better care of yourself so that you're full, so that you can overflow and come from your heart of generosity? You know, that might be something very different for, for you. I'm talking business wise of getting support and family wise, but sometimes it's just asking a friend for help, which I've done a lot of lately. And that used to be really hard for me doing a much better job of that, um, getting the support that I need. Sometimes it's physically taking care of your body, getting a massage or, you know, even exchanging body work or, or getting some light work or, you know, whatever that is for you. There's so many ways that we can find support for ourselves. And what it takes sometimes is just to be willing to ask and to be a support for someone else and to feel totally supported so that you are overflowing with all of the good stuff. So your heart is generous. So you want to serve and give and from a full place, from a place of feeling full, from a place of feeling overflow, not lack. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I love you and namaste.